that Luke was over there like, they didn't show me enough campaign footage, and I'm not I wasn't in multiplayer. Like I... The more I think about it, I, I think I actually really agree with you, Brett. What is it? On what I hope you're about to no, say. No, you, you, you tell me. IP is, IP is king. Yeah, oh. IP is king. Yeah. Oh, Trailer, trailer roundup, and Luke's gonna play with more cars. <laughs> vroom, vroom. The shot of the like creepy old lady during the elevator bit got me very excited. Dude, Mitchell's versus the machines is awesome, and I'm like, what even is this movie? How have I not heard about this? Um, I also want to give a shout out this week to my, my wife, my wife, who got me this awesome A24 book. Make it rated R and release it on Hulu. The next do, it. Announcement. do it, you cowards! Does, does I'm, Luke, I'm does not Luke anti want to burn the books. That's the real question. I'm not anti book, but I just. It's really hard for me to read books. You see, Dune Part you 1. You ask like, me to change my expectations moments before the movie begins? We do it for every movie. I we say, it. what if it sucks? <laughs> the franchise and the jokes that they were willing to write in that show dude because it definitely like pushes the line the whole china bit i was <laughs> like bro what dude the franchise is has been it's surprisingly good it's been it's been legit yeah surprisingly yeah i don't know sam mendez yeah yeah come on now i guess that's he made the one movie that you guys didn't like the light movie about making movies. Empire of Light. Empire, Empire of Light. Light. I never saw it. You didn't like it very much. Eh, yeah, it wasn't what I thought it was gonna be. Yeah. He made two Bond movies I like in nineteen seventeen. <laughs> Luke's microphone just completely on the other side of the room. I'm watching the Chiefs. Okay. I'm a little distracted. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. I feel like he also made something else that I really like. He's made. I mean, he's he's good. good I just filmmaker. didn't think, like if you look at what the subject of the show yeah, is, it's yeah, kind of yeah. like, will this work? Right. Um, and it does like really well. I love that. Like each episode. I guess work. we're doing this now. Each episode <laughs> is like a different look at like f- filmmaking. Yeah. Which I think is really cool. Like production. Yeah. The most recent episode is about like product placement. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> Send those tractors back. I texted you the line. It was like, why? What is it? Why is there a, a Chinese tractor in Sector Nine or something like that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was. Why would there be a Chinese tractor in the Sector Nine cargo bay? <laughs> it's like what? But within the context of the show, it makes perfect sense. And yeah. you're like, oh okay. Oh, he made Jarhead, and wrote a perdition. Oh wow, I didn't realize he did Jarhead. But if you're not watching the franchise. This is my endorsement. You should watch it. It's over on Max. I, I yeah, I'm really enjoying it as well. I am. I'm very curious to see what people outside of video filmmaking production think. Yeah. Of it. Like yeah, there's what a general audience if they really understand what's going on, or if it's just it, it, it and it, maybe pretty set dressing is enough. But like. If you're watching and you're paying to, uh, paying attention, you know what's going on. Like it's all very. <laughs> smartly scripted i will say like there is some pretty crude stuff in it so if that's not really your jam yeah like, there is just be aware like i i think the gurgler it's your jelly the <laughs> gurgler <laughs> episode um with nick kroll it's nick kroll you just have to know what you're getting into he's with playing nick kroll, nick kroll so yeah. <laughs> some of it's pretty funny though i thought yeah I, I thought the bit in the trailer was hilarious what was the bit from that episode you were telling me you thought i'd laugh at Oh no, that had to be at least two episodes ago. Yeah, that was last week's episode. Last week's episode. Yeah, was it with the gurgler? That was episode four. I'm gonna have to think about it. Okay, I'll come back to you. Because there's a couple bits in there that are pretty funny. But 
Yeah. Good show. Enjoying it. Yeah. Till on Max. So. Definitely. Um, yeah. What's up, fanboys and fangirls? <laughs> We're back with another episode of the Fanboy Show. Luke will be We're half- back with another episode of What the Fanboy Luke Show. Luke will be halfway Please. here tonight. Please I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, as he's watching the Chiefs hopefully beat the Buccaneers. You know, we'll see. Fingers I'm, crossed. We're 7 and 0, so now I'm at the point where I'm just like waiting for the first Yeah, loss. when, so is, kinda when like, is the last You want it before the postseason. You're like, you just want it to happen. <laughs> yeah. at, like, at a certain point, you're like, all right, I need you guys to lose. <laughs> if it doesn't happen before the Panthers game, it'll hunt the Panthers game. <laughs> Somehow. Somehow. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the loss that puts any coach on the hot seat, except Andy Reid. Right. I can't remember though, if we play the bills before that, because we always lose to the bills in the regular, in the regular season. season. Yeah. yeah. And then the playoffs, it's like, Oh, never mind. And that's when everybody goes, <laughs> the bills are the best team. And Chiefs are, Chiefs fans are like, okay. You, we'll let you believe that. <laughs> Honestly, it's kind of nice to get the target off your back. So yeah, that's fair. <laughs> um, yeah, so we've got quite a bit of things to talk about tonight. Luke, you got some trailers for us over there? Um, I have three. Sweet. That's better than none. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> uh, first one, Wonder Man. This is the new MCU Disney Plus show, uh, starring Yaya Abdul-Mateen. I somehow missed this, so. Dog, DeAndre Hopkins um, well, is unbelievable. <laughs> man, I for- didn't, I didn't even watch him. <laughs> Rewind. What a catch. <laughs> what a catch. Rewind. Um, it is... I don't know. Maybe. Oh my god. <laughs> maybe so Tyler good. can explain more. He knows a little more about the character. I don't think it's really a trailer worth watching. Yeah, I it's like not, a short tease. I, it's a no. minute long. I couldn't hear a line of dialogue because the music's so loud. Yeah, the the mixing for the audio in it is interesting. Bad, but mm-hmm. yeah, so Wonder Man, like it, it's Yaya Abdul Mateen is the lead. He's an actor who is reading. He reads for this character Wonder Man and mm-hmm. gets the role. And is struck by some energy that gives him superpowers of the character he was going he to be playing. Wonder Man. And so he has to be they like they just encourage him to be like, well, just be the hero you were going to be playing anyways. And <laughs> yeah, so like yeah, yeah. he becomes this superhero, but really he just wanted to be an actor. And it's <laughs> it's kind of like on the nose. Mm-hmm. Um, but I love Yaya Abdul Mateen. I don't. I think this looks interesting. Um, I'll thumbs up it for what it is. I mean, the I'm audio is bad. But, yeah, yeah. Cool. I, I like the concept, but it's just a. <laughs> Not a good trailer. Mm, Maybe yeah. it's because I was using laptop speakers. I don't, I don't know. know. We've heard trailers watched, sound way better than that. I watched the Skeleton Crew trailer right before that, and it didn't. Same company, too. Yeah. yeah. They're all Disney. All Disney. So. Well, it, was, mm. it was sounded fine, so. Yeah, I'm surprised, though, that this is actually coming out, because I feel like it had like a really rough development at a certain I think point. I Yeah, Yaya replaced somebody. Okay. Mm. Yeah, because like, this was been... I this was announced several years ago that they were going to be doing this and i mean they can well, turn out like, those disney plus i feel shows. like disney plus has kind of gone through a uh the growing pains of figuring out what they really want to do with it right yeah in terms of the marvel the mcu shows that are on disney plus um because they they threw a bunch of money at things right away Early on yeah and then they're like wait maybe this isn't the best way of doing it scale it back you know they're figuring out that sweet spot so yeah. i don't know cool cool they've had some success recently loki was season two was good <clears throat> i never watched it i'll talk about agatha here in a, in a bit so oh there it is touchdown number one for hopkins <laughs> beautiful i have him in one of my dynasties and it's one that i'm like blowing up my team <laughs> remember the titans fantastic <laughs> fantastic <laughs> Because he was traded from the Titans. <laughs> um, here, here's my other Wonder Man take. Yeah. Why am I getting Trevor Slattery, Ben Kingsley's character, for the third oh, yeah. time? Yeah, oh, yeah, he's yeah. in this as well? well? That's what I said. I was like, why is he here? We've seen him sooner than we've seen <clears throat> Shang-Chi. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe Shang-Chi will show up. That would be awesome. I'd rather just, you know, have the main thing be about him, though. I want his second movie. And now that guy's directing Spider-Man. Man, I do really love Spider-Man. And I liked all three of those movies. But I want Shang-Chi too. <laughs> <sighs> and I don't, I don't need Trevor Slattery, man. And his little flying pig is back or whatever. Oh, yes. From, yeah. But 
course. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay. Um, I had already mentioned it. Skeleton Crew. Yep. Star Wars. Um, Star Wars show? Goonies. I think, it, yeah, it's um, a show, right? Yeah. <laughs> Man, i got to be honest. I don't like what I'm seeing with this. I liked listening to... I was like sitting over here when Luke was watching this, and it just cracked me up every time. And like a new thing came on screen. It's just, it's just <sighs> the trailer playing. It's just, I hate that elephant. <laughs> I hate that music. That's, they, they've got to have something that's going to be a toy. Yeah. And every, every show, it was Baby Yoda. Dude, I so I watched this trailer over the weekend, and all I could think about when I watched it was like, this feels like a group of kids found Star Wars. And I don't like that at all. Mm. It's like they they went through the wardrobe and they ended up in the Star Wars universe. Yeah. And I just think it's super strange. I said in the first trailer, the suburbs feels it feels weird. Off. Suburbs like it, do feel it weird. It doesn't I... fit well in the second trailer. Have you, you watched it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. just like I just don't think it feels at all like it fits within the greater Star Wars thing. It's an interesting challenge to try and undertake to make something as modernly relevant as suburbia (laughs) like fit in star Wars, like you think about it you're like yeah that like there would be planets where that is how it works right like i i get that i can i can fathom that but it just it looks too much like earth i'm seeing driveways and lawns of grass yeah yeah it's like again logically yeah, I get that that there is probably there, there would be an there, equivalent. There would be an equivalent. I get it, but it yeah. It's it feels uh not so far far away anymore. <laughs> anyway, I hope it's great. Yeah. I always come back around to the fact that I hated Andor at the beginning mm-hmm. and now it's the best thing that they've put out on Disney Plus. It's just one of their best things that Disney has put Disney's out. Disney's put out. Like, yeah. Just straight up. I like this trailer. Um I do think my the fact that i have like a nine-year-old uh plays into that i'm excited that i can sit down and most likely watch convince her to watch this and watch it, does, it with her it kind of just makes me want to watch the guy <laughs> <laughs> that's fair which is a classic so look if that's not on your have to show your child if the goonies isn't on your like to be watched list for your kid then we need to talk about but you don't oh, have yeah. that i that's that's my responsibility oh yeah and Tyler's eventually as well. But at what age? Because it's they've got to be old enough. That's the thing. That it's funny, but young enough that it's still like a little creepy. Yeah. I think I think like eleven, twelve, maybe. <clears throat> That's when I watched Lord of the Rings for the first time. That. Yeah. <laughs> Only because I'm kind of surprised. Was <laughs> I'm kind of surprised at how early my sister watched Lord of the Rings. She would have been two years younger than me and we watched those like when they came out. So Yeah. I mean Logan was thirteen, so I got grandpa in. Yeah. Grandfathered in. Yeah. Grandpa in. You got brought <laughs> Cool. You said you had one more? Uh Squid Game season two. We've gotten a couple teasers uh for this. This is the first full trailer. Um it looks really good. I'm good. A- I'm, that's awesome i haven't seen this one this trailer yet so um i don't remember i was his, really worried about it yeah our, our our lead is back and he is back in the game and he's kind of doing whatever he can to get people to stop playing mm. and it doesn't look like it's anybody work. wants to stop yeah um i'm i'm just ready for more squid game it's one of the it's honestly one of the best shows on netflix if you can manage it because it is pretty hard to watch sometimes it can be um but man it was it was such a surprise and i'm ready for more so bring it on yeah i think they have a lot of opportunity with puzzles and just group dynamics i mean squid game is so much like it's a weird lord of lord of the flies with rules right like Mm. there are rules um, but just watching how those social dynamics change throughout the, the, the first season was like just really, really cool. And I'm curious, like you said, with him coming back and being kind of the opposite, you know, trying to not play, get people not to play. That's, yeah. 
it sounds like a really fascinating position to take. So mm-hmm. I didn't watch this trailer because I've never watched the show. <clears throat> what are you, not a sadist? Come on. <laughs> Luke and I are over here like, we like watching people suffer. <laughs> well, no, I don't like doing that. We don't. We don't. But it's, I like it's, good, it's a show. I like it's good fake. stories. And most of the time, if it's horror or thriller or action, there is people suffering in it at yeah. some point. <laughs> Truth. It's not the part I like. I'm not it's out the overcoming, watching, right? It's I'm not out here watching Saw, man. Yeah, oh, fair enough. Or Terrifier 3. Yeah. Well, hey, that thing broke $50 million. Congrats. Good for you. Now we'll get 13 they even had spinoffs. Art, they even of... had Art the Clown uh, <laughs> ring the Nasdaq bell on Halloween. Crazy. <laughs> what a wave to be riding. I'm, I, Good I'm, for legit, that. I'm legit happy for those filmmakers. Good for that team. Yeah. <laughs> To be able to find any success in Hollywood is hard. To find it mutilating humans is an, <laughs> and children is another thing. And then next is the blood and honey poo universe. Oh, yeah. We got a new oh, picture from that, too. I saw, like, a little video of the animatronic Pinocchio. Pinocchio, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is what fuels my nightmares. <laughs> Have you, did you see it? Yes. Yeah. I, I just closed twitter you were like, like nope i'm done i'm not getting back on this app until tomorrow because i want to be able to sleep tonight i don't like pinocchio i don't like any version of pinocchio it's not even stop motion man i still think the original scary it's mainly the island island not yeah the puppet but dude i will say that. of everything they've made that this Pinocchio thing is the creepiest looking thing they've I done. I don't know. Did you see Tom Hanks in that live action remake? Oh, I was talking about the Blood and Honey people. I know. But also, yes, I, di- <laughs> I didn't watch it, but yes, I saw the trailer. <laughs> I watched trailer. the trailer and I was like, nope. I won't watch this. Don't this need looks that. bad. On the flip side, the Netflix Pinocchio Guillermo's is good. It is my, it's my favorite version. So I'll never watch it. I know. Now. I know. Sorry, Guillermo. I'll get Tyler to watch it at some point. I'll be honest. I don't really care about Pinocchio that much either, but I'll check it out if you could convince me one day. I'll work I'll work you. Just throw it on with your kid in the room. Yeah, that'll go over well. It's a children's story. It's about love and happiness, isn't it? It's a fairy tale. I don't think that one is. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> There's only one demon in it. <laughs> My kid does like scary stuff, so I think it's I think it is at age appropriate, right? So you have to know when. Like, I think it would be a great children's movie, probably slightly older than what you would show your. I don't know. Bryn's three. Like she's, a Disney, she's ready, right? It's, it's not a Disney movie. Uh, maybe maybe Moana too. <laughs> like I think Claire could Claire could watch it no problem. Dude, we're going to see Moana two in theaters, and Bryn reminds me every day, Daddy. Moana 2 is going to be in the movie theater soon. I'm like, yeah. She's like, Thanksgiving? I'm like, yep. She's like, okay. Do we have tickets? No, child. We've not bought tickets to Moana you call 2 your child, yet. child? Sometimes. So you, I think you could actually, if you look through my phone right now. What are places? See, I, I, I text Dana this morning. What did I text her? I said... Oh, we were driving the daycare. I said, Bryn just took her shoes off. I'm going to fight our kid. <laughs> so I had to stand in the rain and put my kid's shoes back on yep. this morning. So that was great. That's it was raining pretty fun. good. I was drenched all morning at hey, work. It was awesome. At least we're getting rain. Yeah. yeah that's a win. That's <laughs> we a win. need Dude, it. it's been raining for like 36 hours straight. <laughs> it's crazy. I love it. I'm worried I'm going to need a build mark. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't do that yet? No, dude. My, my child, Mark, you if been, I don't make it to the polls, everybody's going to look up my stuff while I'd be like, you didn't vote. You'd be, you'd be fine if you lived on the second level. What? He hasn't the voted yet. I, I haven't so. voted. Oh. Tomorrow's election day, and if I don't make it tomorrow, we're all going to know. Everybody's going to go look up my name on the voting <laughs> website. They're going to be like, you piece of crap didn't vote. Like, Our candidate lost because I did, sorry, I didn't build a boat. <laughs> Wait, people can do that? Yeah. People can look up your voting registration? They can look up to see if you vote. If you vote. Oh, interesting. Not, not who you voted for. I'm going to look up Tyler that right is now. Secret. I'm registered. I'm not voting tomorrow. So. Why not? 
Never voted. I'm not voting tomorrow either. You but it's because uh, I voted last week. So yeah. you should do it. Yeah. It's kind of fun. It doesn't sound fun at all. <laughs> last time, last uh, presidential election, I lived in Park City. Oh. I voted in five minutes. It yeah, was, oh, I bet that went so fast. It was awesome. <laughs> I went before work, and I was just like, "Well, oh, you know, let's see what the lines are like." I walked in, and they're like, oh, yeah, yeah. "ID over there." <laughs> boop, 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 boop. Left. It was amazing. They gave me a pin and a free pin. Still nice. my car. Oh, that actually might convince me to do it. <laughs> <laughs> if I yeah. need to write something, I there have my you voting go. pin. Well, yeah, no, my my one uh, my one pitch towards uh, people who who don't want to vote or don't think that they should vote is just that even if you're not voting for the in the presidential election or you, you think that that's not worth your time, um, you know, there's lots of local races that are happening people who um like judges who can be reaffirmed for additional terms or not um you know and just being i think at least a little bit invested in your in your community is always good so you know maybe next time maybe a little bit just do a little bit of civic engagement oh. doesn't have to be voting but Ooh. it's a right we uh we have so take advantage of it good pitch all right, there we go. Now I've, we can talk I've about not more done any research on anything, <laughs> so I'm going in there and checking a box like I did in high school doing yeah, a Scantron test. Right. It's like, what's the answer? Like, C. I don't know. Guess. C is the best guess, guess is what I've guess. heard, so that's what I'm rolling with. That's I think it's B now, though. And it's probably changed. Have they changed? I thought they did. Which is better to be random. I'm yeah. assuming they have AI to fix all that. Mm. Oh, that's a good point. Probably. They can, like, s- track those trends and make sure they're <laughs> changing it. Gosh, man. Okay, well, um... Computers are smart. We have a few things to review this week. Luke went and watched Conclave. You want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, that was a last-second hurrah. <laughs> well, I was thinking about seeing Here. Oh, yeah, that's out. And then it's getting terrible reviews. Mm. And I was like, okay. <laughs> Something about staring at one camera angle for two and a half hours just sounds really unappealing to me. Bold, bold strategy, but they did it. Bummer, Kelsey. Maybe not successfully. Um, yeah, so I just looked at the Conclave showtimes because I'd seen the trailer and thought it looked good. Yeah. And I was like, all right, let's go see this one. And um, it was a great decision because it was really good. Good. Um, if you don't know what this is about, the Pope dies and Ray finds... This is based on a true story? No. Okay, cool. It's based on a book. Well, I mean, I guess you could say loosely based on a story. A Pope has died before and sure, they do sure, do sure. a conflict. But, it, but it's not like a very specific, this is... This is this, this is guy. what happened when Pope... No. This, Benedict passed away or whatever. This is, I'd say, a historical fiction. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I'm down. Um, Pope dies. Ray Fiennes is in charge of putting together this conclave. Um, to nominate to, the To get the next, next pope. And, you know, secrets start coming out. Oh. He's doing some investigating. He's learning some things. And it's... Just kind of like a drama. Their relationships, like all these these popes, yeah, drama <clears throat> together and learning about each other and picking the pope. And this is what I'll say: if you're Catholic, don't go see it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you'll appreciate uh, the things that happen in it. Um, but also, I'm not Catholic, so I don't know. Um, that also being said, the only movie I feel like I can compare it to, and I'm not saying it's better, Mm -hmm. is Oppenheimer. Hmm. Oh, wow. And that is because, like, Oppenheimer is a bunch of nerds (laughs) just building a bomb. Yeah. 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 And it is one of the most intense movies you'll see. And this is a bunch of religious dudes (laughs) talking about their beliefs and going should we pick this guy or this guy is this one worse or is this one worse because we're losing Mm -hmm. and it's one of the most intense movies you'll see that's awesome 
Um, I think a big part of that is the soundtrack. Mm -hmm. Um, whereas like in Oppenheimer, the soundtrack was this like rolling intensity throughout. And then like, this is like, it'd be really quiet and it's just, (laughs) my goodness, the strings come in nice and quiet and the tension just rises and you're just like, man, what's going to happen? We're just walking down a hall. What what's down there? Like it almost it almost. You're just feels waiting for the turn to a horror film. Scary. It things. almost feels like that sometimes. That's awesome. It's actually. like, is a demon gonna show up in this? Is that's a really cool like style choice. Yeah, but also, did not know this going in, and I learned it because of the trailers I watched before the movie. This movie's PG. Oh, oh really? interesting. I just assumed it was R rated. Or PG thirteen at least. At least. Yeah. Yeah. But then, like, I'm getting, like, the dog cop movie. What is the half the dog? Oh, movie, the, the dog body? dog man. The, yeah, that was one of the trailers I got. I was like, what is this? I th- I was like, am I in the wrong theater? And then, like, not even ten minutes later, some old people came in. And they're like, is this the conclave showing? And somebody else was like, yeah. <laughs> I was just like, okay, I'm in the right place. I kind of love that. That's but awesome. yeah, it's it's PG. You don't see There's... many movies like that that are PG, especially like the Oscar bait. Yeah, that's awesome. Major acting showcase, writing showcase. Yeah, movies. Yeah, that's really cool. I would. It wouldn't surprise me if there is a bit of a decision to lean into some of that. Like, like Angel Studios would put out like a PG thirteen live action thing with yeah. you know maybe not a, a huge actor but you know a recognizable, a recognizable right? name and they'll make it pg so that you can take the family to it and i and i wonder if despite the fact that this is probably not a family movie in the traditional sense you you may get some of that audience that is more accustomed to going to a quote unquote religious film you know as a, as a family or as a group. Yeah. But I mean, also, and I thought about it, like, just context. They're a bunch of cardinals and yeah. priests. They're not going to be yelling, you, and all this stuff while they're in the middle of... I mean, if A24 made this movie, they would. Oh, <laughs> Listen, if A24 this movie, there definitely would have been a demon at the end of it. <laughs> That's true. Because they don't know how to do anything else. That's true. Um, But yeah, the, the score, honestly, my favorite of the year so far. Dang. That's awesome. Um, I, I thought it was awesome. Uh, the other thing uh, that just it just washes over you, man, is the way the movie looks. Mm-hmm. It's just beautiful throughout. Mm. Every single well frame you see could be a poster for the oh, movie. That's awesome. It it felt like there was a lot of like center framing. Mm-hmm. Um, like oh man, there's one shot, and it's like seven cardinals sitting in like a auditorium like thing there's like theater seats oh sure and they're kind of spread throughout but the outsides of the theater are all completely dark where the lights are off and in the middle where they're sitting the lights are on and they're mm-hmm. just right in the middle of the screen i'm just like i'm just looking at it i'm like oh don't forget to pay attention to what they're saying <laughs> because it's so pretty like it, the colors are like red and white which you know they're wearing that most of the time too yeah but i felt like that color just kept going throughout Mm. and just constantly was going oh wow that's that's so cool and then once again the score is playing and you're just like oh yes this is so good um and then there's the matter of like the story Mm -hmm. um and the performers were they're just so good every everybody's good Mm -hmm. um but I'd say the th- main three guys, um, being Ray Fine, Stanley Tucci, and John Lithgow, are are just awesome. Nice. Oh, I forgot that. Yeah, Lithgow's in this. Um, I haven't seen a trailer in a minute. So. Yeah, and then like. You know, it starts off, and somebody like gives this little rumor to Ray Fines, and he's investigating it. And, it just like more and more kind of pops up throughout the movie, and I just felt like every single situation rose until eventually you get to the end, and it's just like, oh man, hope that was the right choice. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, but yeah, I, I, I wasn't surprised that I liked it, but I was, I was pretty blown away with how much I enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, especially cause just with Oscar bait, I feel like you never really know how much you'll like it. You'll be like, okay, it was good, but did I like it? Yeah. Did you see that this is considered a thriller? No. Yeah. It's considered a thriller conspiracy thriller. Hmm. Okay, yeah. That, that's pretty cool. I would, uh... That fits with what you're, how you described it, though. Yeah. So, yeah. that's awesome. Um, I was just looking through, like, some, some stills from it. Yeah. On, on my letterbox, I just wrote, like, I'm really <clears throat> curious to see how many Oscar noms it gets. Because I feel like... What do you it think could it... really be anything. It's like, okay, yeah. So, like, sure. if it were to win... I'm not going to dispute that. If it were for to win for one category, what do you think its strongest category would be? I really think it's... I'm, the two, would I would say score. Okay. Okay. Um, and the other one, I would say cinematography. It has a super strong chance. Nice. Nice. Um, obviously, with cinematography, it's competing with Dune, which is sci-fi. <laughs> But this is the complete opposite. Yeah. And like they're totally different. <coughs> dif- they're shot so different. Right. Which Did I you look up the cool director? Uh, no, I don't. Well, I did look it up, but I don't remember it. He directed All Quiet on the Western Front. There we go. Okay. That makes sense. Was it the same guy? The score? Was it the same guy? Um, uh, Working on it. Composer. Do you know the guy's name? Ver- Volker. Verlochten or something? It is the same score. Volker Bertelman. Yeah. Man, dude, it was so good. <laughs> oh. um, Cinematographer was... Stif- was it the All Quiet on the Western Front guy? <laughs> Probably. Um, no. Be this team. Yeah. No, no, no. no. It's the director of Jackie. That one was nominated. Um, oh, yeah. And a movie called A Prophet. A lot of stuff I've not heard of. Hmm. Acting, it's it's so tough too because it's like nothing. Not everything's come out yet. Right. <clears throat> yeah. But I I do I give it a fanboy worthy. Um. Mainly. The Catholics. <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> well, I think they'll be pretty turned off by it mm-hmm. if they're. Depends. I think I feel like uh, if, if, I feel like Catholics have. They they're used to being stereotypically like thick skin and yeah, and they're used to being put in the negative light yeah. as well. Yeah. Like, just for you know history. Yeah, I'm watching it with a Mennonite mindset too. <laughs> so, <coughs> a little a little different for sure. Cool. Well, that's neat. I it's on my short list. I'm gonna. I don't have time, but I'm going to try and find time to get out and watch yeah. that one. I'd say if you like watching the Oscar movies, mm-hmm. you like you could watch this one now. You don't need to wait for the list. It'll probably be on. <laughs> It'll probably be the, cool. Dude, cool, that's cool. an awesome feeling when you watch something and you're like, yeah, I'll hear about this one later. If it's year. not, I'm just going to call a snub now. <clears throat> All right. Because there's no way there's 10 movies that were better than this one this year. Is Rafe, For that audience. Is Ray Fiennes mm-hmm. going to get a Best Actor nom? Like so. is it is he? I think he could. Okay, cool. I thought he was super. Good. Be, he's in the mix. I mean, he's always awesome. Yeah. So, I I it wouldn't surprise me even not having seen it. Mm-hmm. So nice. Hopefully that one comes to a streamer. I that does sound really interesting. Like, it's weird, but the thing that interests me the most is you know based on it being about the Pope and. The conspiracies that surround that. And then it's like, oh, but it's also PG. So I'm like, wait, what is the conspiracy? <laughs> like, I just find that fascinating. Yeah. Not all conspiracies are. Gotta think plus. history of Catholicism. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool. Um, I'll real quick, I'll talk about Agatha all along. Um, I watched that, I finished that this week. They had the, uh, the two season or two episode finale. Um, was on Wednesday. So uh, I've talked about it here and there over the course of the last couple episodes. Um, overall, I, I think that this is a really 
ideal like this this feels like a, a really ideal Disney plus Marvel spin-off series for me um, it is a small very contained story um, with a character who was interesting in you know but didn't get a ton of screen time wasn't you know was kind of a, a pivotal character in another more mainline MCU property um, but you don't need to know anything outside really anything outside of what was in that first property uh, which is WandaVision. I was like, why are you being secret? I'm sorry. Yeah, Comicbook.com yeah, yeah. <laughs> with your WandaVision. four paragraphs before you reveal what you're talking about. My bad. <laughs> um, other than WandaVision, you don't need to know anything else about the MCU. <coughs> and even that, it's... it's You don't need it. You don't need it. It's They're going to fill you in anyway. Yeah, they fill you in. Um, there's some stuff with, like, because one of the characters is Billy. Mm-hmm. Um, from Stranger Things. From Stranger Things. From oh, WandaVision. Stranger Things joke in the franchise. Wild behavior. <laughs> Wild behavior. Sorry, carry on. Um, no, I I think that it's maybe it's either two episodes too long, and there's just some things in the middle that could have been cut or abbreviated, um, or what ha- is happening in the middle, kind of the the meat of what the these characters are doing on the witch's road, is it just kind of gets repetitive. It's like th- three episodes are kind of the same. It's the same thing. It's a premise of there's a a challenge. Uh, they're they're going down the road. There's a uh, a challenge that presents itself, and they have to solve a problem. Like they get locked in a room. And they have to solve a, a problem, and and each one reveals something unique about the characters, um, which is cool. But it, it does feel very samey. Um, so what I would say to anyone who's thinking about watching this is just be prepared to like, you you might enjoy the the situations they're in, but like there's kind of a reward at the end of that. I think I think the ending of this show um, pays off what what all it's been setting up. So. Um, it's got pretty unique characters. Really, I pulled it up here. Let me let me open it. Um, Catherine Hahn is great. She's just ha- tons of energy. She's just fun to watch, no matter what she's doing. Um, in in this, um, Joe Locke is Billy slash Teen. Uh, for the first like three episodes, yeah, you don't know. He's just he has a. He has, a spell put on him so he can't whenever he tries to say his name he just, he just mumbles that's how they try and keep it a secret um that sounds really stupid <laughs> well luckily so, the, sorry. they don't let it go on too long that's good uh and it's kind of like agatha figures it out fairly quickly even before the audience is revealed yeah. so I sorry, I really don't consider that a spoiler. <laughs> well, then they give him his suit and all that stuff too. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think the other standout one uh, actress in this is Aubrey Plaza. Um, she gets to play Rio, who is you know someone who has a history with Agatha beyond, um, just what's happening in the show. Her character is really interesting, and there's a lot of tension even some sensual tension between her and Agatha. Like it's kind of, they just have fun playing with it. And, um, when it's all said and done, like there's a really, I think there's a really satisfying arc there for that relationship. Um, there's kind of three, uh, I mean, I've seen other witches who hang out. It's really interesting to, reveal this character that way but i i don't know if in, they the, in the comics yeah yeah very characters different tied to thanos. thanos thanos and deadpool right like yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just so weird it's just weird timing it's just, it's i just very, saw the tweet like yeah, yeah if i would have been thanos i probably would have gotten these yeah. <laughs> <laughs> agree <laughs> like i understand it yeah well. i feel you dog yeah yeah 
Um, yeah, so there are the three other witches who are kind of just along for the ride. Um, I think they're, I think they're okay. Um, some of them have a little more, uh, talent's not the right word. Like, some of them are just more fun to watch than others. Yeah. And, and, but none of them are really on screen for that much time. Um, it doesn't really feel like you're missing much even when they're not on screen. Does Billy feel like he fits? Because, like, I, I kind of feel like, based on everything I've seen people tweet, thread, based on what you're saying, mm-hmm. does he only fit as the connective tissue between her and Wanda, or does he have his own, like, journey that he goes he on? He is, yes, he is very important to the story. Okay, cool. Yes. Um, and the kind of thematically he's important to agatha beyond just the fact of the relationship the relationship with wanda like that that it's an important part of their relationship and they talk about it um but agatha has her own secrets that you know make hanging out with him um more impactful by the end okay so i think they do a pretty good job of that um uh, the last thing I think I'll say is um, it still it it feels I don't know what I don't know what the budget on this was. Um, there are some portions, especially the middle bit, that really does it can start to feel like a little bit of a this was shot on a volume. Yeah. What what like the budget doesn't feel like they were given enough to really go out and do something, um, but at the same time. I think it kind of works. Uh, it, it doesn't feel like they overspent on it, which I appreciate. Um, now, if I learned that the budget for this was $120 million and this is what we got, then yeah, I may be a little more. <laughs> Come on now. I saw a thing that was like highlighting the sets for it. I don't know. If I find it, I'll There, there are some really good sets. Um, and, the, and they do some fun <coughs> things with the challenges. Uh, you know, it's, it's magic. And so... They have costume changes all the time. Like they yeah. have their, their normal garb that they're going through this walking the road with. But then whenever they get into a challenge, they're in like era aesthetic, era appropriate aesthetic clothing and, and things like that. So that's all pretty fun. Um, music I thought was fine. I didn't, wouldn't say anything really stood out except for the Witch's Road song, um, which definitely... If you're hearing it all over social media, may you may get tired, but I think as it's integrated into the show, is done really well, um, and it's not just a song for them to sing. There's thematic ties to why why are they singing it? How is it relevant? Yada yada yada. So um, overall, I'm gonna give this a probably like a Matthew McConaughey. Um, it's better than I expected. Um, probably not for everyone, but it it itches, or it again. I think it it knows exactly what it is, and it does that well. Um, I think this is a good property, good story, good little series for Disney Plus Marvel. Not too connected to the MCU. You can kind of watch it as a one-off thing. Good ho- Halloween season. Good, yeah. Time of year releasing, <laughs> like that was that was all really well done. Um, probably not one I'll 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 necessarily rewatch, but I haven't rewatched any of the Disney Plus shows. Yeah. So. The only one I'm really planning on rewatching, and it's not a Marvel thing, is Andor right before season two. Comes yeah. <laughs> In like four years or something. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but that's when I'll check it out too. <laughs> So yeah, there's my uh, review of Agatha all along. Better than nice. I expected. Nice. That's a that's a pretty good endorsement. I'm glad you. Uh, somebody's keeping up with the MCU. MCU Disney Plus. Really, it's you know we all we all really have Stephanie to thank because she. Oh yeah. She and not that she would probably be like, oh, this is like I have to watch it or yada yada yada, but just. It's a it's a nice thing. Um, look, when you get married and you've been married for you know, ten plus years, it's you gotta find those things to just you you can do together, right? And so like this was a nice, 
we get home from Wednesday night stuff, we can sit down, watch a quick episode. Yeah. Before bed. It was nice. To wind down. We always like finding those those shows. Wednesday nights and Sunday nights. She's not watching. She don't watch Penguin? She's not watching the Penguin. No, oh, but I told her she'll, I think she'd enjoy it, but it is much heavier subject matter and. Dude, I mean, especially the last Not that, like, episode. House of the Dragon isn't, so... I I'm not caught up, I so... No. You, you learn a little bit about Oswald. Ozzy. Latest episode. Nice. <laughs> I'm looking for... I'll be... The finale is this upcoming weekend, right? Yeah, there's one more. Yeah, that's right. So I'll be, I'll be all caught up and ready to talk, about, to talk it. about it Monday. Sweet. I'll stay up Sunday night to watch it. <laughs> dude, I've been falling asleep during Sunday night football at, like, 9.50. Oh, dude. No. You getting old? I am, you old. <laughs> but I'll stay up to watch the games. Have just been boring. That's also no, probably that's, a yeah. big part of it. Watching Sam Darnold throw picks directly to people, <laughs> nobody's in the area, is pretty exhausting. But should we jump into some news? Yeah, Tyler, what yeah. do you got for news over there? It's been a little while since you've there's, spoken. There's so. some Tyler stories. Calls it on Sunday night, the schnooze. The schnooze. <laughs> that's right. Um, there's been, there's a decent bit of news this week, I'd say. Um, Ridley Scott is developing a new Alien film. Yep. He, he confirmed. Um. Is this, now is this separate from the Alien Romulus sequel? I assume so, because I okay. think that's the same creative team from yeah. Romulus. is yeah. back for another one. Okay. But is it not, also not the Prometheus sequel? I don't think they've said anything. It's I, Prometheomulus. I, sure I mean, look, well, I'd be down. I because if it's if it's a sequel to Prometheus and Alien Covenant, I'm in. Let's finish it off. If it's just another Alien movie, yeah. <laughs> Dude, he's just doing whatever he wants at this point. Um, he literally does. He we, makes four movies a year. And we uh, always does what he wants. I think I've I think I've talked about this with Ridley before. Like the guy's like 86. He's yeah. in his grandpa years. He's just um, making whatever he wants, man. Just. He's putting yeah. newspapers and Gladiator too. Just make. I did hear that story, and I can't wait, wait to see it. Wait, what? Apparently, there's like a scene where someone's reading like an, a like a, a newspaper like thing. In he Gladiator. wanted that time travel bit to stay, <laughs> dude. So That's funny. crazy. Um, I'll do a couple more here before we. Um, I'll do a couple more movie things. John Krasinski will be reprising his role as Jack Ryan Jack in a movie Ryan. with Amazon. That's right. Um, cool. So that's that's a cool little like capstone to that show, which I think is neat. Um, it's a good show. I, know, I was gonna say I know like Luke really likes mm-hmm. the show. My mother in law really likes the Ooh. show, so that's really cool um, for fans of that. And then last movie thing I have, and I know there's a bunch more out there, but um, Eddie Redmayne <laughs> said that the Fantastic Beast franchise is likely over. Did. Is um, dead. Yeah, that thing is dead, and we've all known that for a long time. <laughs> but it's funny that that made the news this week. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, nobody thought we were getting more of that, especially the moment they announced a new Harry Potter TV show. Yeah, as soon as they announced the TV show, it was like, and <laughs> yeah, Fantastic Beasts is gone. Honestly, gone. just after the ending of whatever the third one was, I still have not watched that movie. It it like it ended. Yeah, I, like. Yes, it could have kept going, and they obviously wanted it to, but the the good guys beat the bad guys. Yeah. It, it it ended. It was, and it was such a like, we have to have an ending here because we don't know we're gonna get another one. Yeah, right. Like it, it didn't. We have too many controversies. Was, we need to. Make it was sure not this. a satisfying ending. That's what was most disappointing with it was just how meh that ending felt. Yeah, we. I remember liking it. Dan and I, liked, I still I have not watched it. I liked the movie overall. I've I liked each of those movies. Was that movie Johnny Depp? Who was it? No, it's uh, Mads. Mads. That's right, Mads Mikkelsen. I remember lo- really liking him too. Yeah. No, I. It it just Colin felt... Farrell is still the best one. All <laughs> three movies has three different people playing him, yeah. <laughs> which I actually I honestly think is kind of cool. Yeah. Like I'm it's all by like movie happenstance, movie. but it turned out cool. Yeah. Yeah, really, a really weird way of it all happening. My yeah. other stories are yeah. are video game related, so I'll let one of you guys. I don't have this. any new stories this week. I was a slacker. Luke, there's two big gaming news stories this week. I think. Oh, I what did I miss? Story. Oh, what's movie your movie stories. story? Um, Takashi Yamazaki is directing the next Godzilla movie. Yes. Oh he yeah. Did minus one. Yep. Yep. That's so a good one. Godzilla fans rejoiced around the world. The writer <laughs> director. 
VFX Ed, coordinator. VFX coordinator and editor of the of minus one. Do you think this movie will get twenty million dollars this time? <laughs> or maybe it? like Sundays off. <laughs> Um, if I had to bet, it's probably Sundays. <laughs> probably. But you have to work all the way through the night on Saturday <laughs> yeah. night. Yeah, your you're Friday, when you come in to work on Friday, you're not leaving till Saturday at 11.59 p.m. I am very curious how the, that post-production is going to flow. I don't think they can... I don't think it'll be the exact same. I oh, and We're talking about that, right? Like... It won't be burning the candle at both ends with a team of how many? Like 15? Dude, I don't know. it was it a just, tiny like group. 10 people. Super, yeah. super small, right? But I also don't think that they're going to be like, here's $100 million and you can Hire con- as many contract as 30 different FX, VFX studios. Well, I don't right? think like, he's going to want to. No, I don't. But because they have the same coordinator, I don't think they will. I do think that is going to expand to maybe, oh, yeah. you know, hey, we're working with. Weta or a couple studios I, here, to ILM try to or someone, right? Yeah. Like they 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 have the money to work with some of the best of the best, yeah. But also still have that very personal one on one connection with the the people who are you know as just, overseers. My hope is that they don't overdo it because yeah. I really really love visually how minus one looked. Yeah. Um. It's not always perfect, but visually it, it very much has its own style. And mm-hmm. I, I would really like, assuming this is some sort of follow-up or whatever, mm-hmm. I'd like that style to stay. However, whatever that team decides to make, I trust. Because yeah. Minus One is one of the best movies I've watched in recent years. So. Yeah. <clears throat> so good. Um, this is something Brent... Brent? Brett. <laughs> Me! Uh, you sent to our little chat. Room. Oh, oh yeah, uh, I did. We're right. getting AI Peter Cushing again. Oh yes. Again? Oh. Or I guess the first one was a deep fake. Is that considered AI though? I, it was hair. It was terrible. Yeah, it was so <laughs> bad. He's being bra- brought back from the dead. Dude, the uh, the clip of him walking across the deck in Rogue One will forever like haunt my nightmares. <laughs> like it walks. He, I said it walks across. I can't even say he. Like it walks across the, the deck, and I was like. Ugh. But, Why are you moving like that? Yeah, it's a document. Wow, <laughs> <laughs> it's a documentary. Of, here, do, it's a documentary that follows the story of film production company that developed an iconic series of classic gothic horror and fantasy films. And he's, uh, just, and they need him for some reason. He's a guy in it. Okay. Just cancel the entire thing now. <laughs> please, don't. please don't. Yeah, we don't need it. We don't, don't want it. We don't need it. Um, but yeah, those are the two movie stories I had. Cool. I'll take one game story. You want to take the other? Yes. You go first. I'll take the uh, Wolverine one. Okay. Marvel's Wolverine at Insomniac. Their game director left. Oh, no. Um, and has joined the Xbox team. Will be leading Perfect Dark. Which is really that's strange because that's pretty far along to be jumping in on, but um, yeah, it's no. a it's a choice. But the Ratchet and Clank team uh, will be taking over Wolverine. This is Marcus Smith um, is the creative director, and Mike Daly is the game director. Dude, These, Ratchet and Clank was so good. They did Rift Apart. I, I wonder, yeah, yeah. Which that's... I mean, they were already Insomniac people, so they know the culture, sure, they know sure. how they work. Um, I don't think. I think the impact is bigger on the Xbox side than it is on the PlayStation side. For sure. Um, and I don't I don't say that like, oh, this is bad for one or the other. I just think you have, you know, Insomniac's pretty well insulated. They have several teams. Yeah. They're able to just move some people over who already know how Insomniac functions. So, like, you're not really going to have a ton of change. Maybe personalities, but... Yeah. Xbox is getting, like, a dude who's coming from a open world action Cannot game to a first person shooter and it's the numbers the ch- culture on that shift check is so that different they wrote to get him over there because yeah. that's not like hey i'm leaving in six months later oh i'm joining xbox right that, that's like it that's happened a, actively <laughs> uh i'm leaving probably because i'm taking this job at xbox right like realistically that's sounds like what's happening yeah with the timing so crazy 
Uh, which, the... which hopefully means oh. that none of these projects are sorry are really mm-hmm. in in bad positions. Uh, I don't think they are. I mean, I mean, Perfect Dark's been in development forever, but Perfect we have gameplay of Perfect Dark. Yeah, that's what. That's why I think it's so bizarre. <laughs> yeah, like, we had a pretty good like trailer or gameplay trailer recently. Like three minutes long of just yeah. it's like pure the gameplay. Person go around. Yeah, and I thought it looked pretty neat. Yeah. So it's just shocking to hear that a change like that is happening this late in that production cycle. But well, it, there are usually they maybe just be trying to push across the finish lines. So. I mean, and. We we've talked a lot about how in or the past. Or what happened with the other director? Yeah, because well, like, that's true too. We didn't know about Marathon's game director. Yeah. for the longest time. Could be like an HR thing. Creep. Yeah, it yeah. could be an HR thing. Yeah, yeah, that's yep. true. Good point. So no need to panic. I don't think. I think you're right. Both of those projects are. They're in good shape. In good shape, I think. At this point, and if they're not, they're Wolverine's got more time in the incubator than Perfect Dark probably does. So. Yeah. Uh, the other gaming story. Pour one out for uh, Firewalk Studios. It's it's gone forever. Yeah, that's uh, right. Sony shut it down. We knew that was coming though. Fortunately, I wasn't sure. I didn't think they'd shut it down. I figured they'd just be like, "You're a support studio mm. for the next three years until you get another chance." I guess I yeah. Just with with the budget, I wasn't sure how much they'd try, right? Like you're now working on. <laughs> we've invested X amount of money into these, this team, yeah, right, and and this IP, this property, um, that's new. It came out of the gate rough, um, you know. Would they be willing to give them another? 12 months to make maybe not even 12 months seven or eight months to do a free-to-play version of it i i mean i I don't think you need to take that long to make a free-to-play version of it but figure out what is that is there a way of incorporating this people seem to be excited about the idea of a sing of like the story and the characters in a single player sense is it possible to move this in that direction and i i assume those are the kind of conversations they had and unfortunate i say unfortunately but i think unfortunately for the studio the the answer was we're just going to take a tax write off and it all they'll uh, they'll live on through secret level secret level secret level but no, it'll, it. I don't know. The studio's dead now. If you loved the concept of what you thought that game was going to be, go play the Guardians of the Galaxy game. Oh, it's so good. Super underrated. Highly recommend it. Very, very good. Nice. Yeah. And I believe Great the soundtrack. I believe the Epic Game Store was just giving it away for free the other day. Oh wow! So crazy. Sweet. Any other news stories? I don't think so. Okay um weekly updates things i did this week stephanie and i went and su- went to go see venom the last dance uh luke's review did not scare us away um, i mean I, I guess i wasn't trying to scare you no no just inform do you wish it had no <laughs> uh look it's it's not a good film um but it it you're luke, luke was right i think he, luke hit it right on, nail on the head it was for the most part, pretty entertaining. It had some really good moments. Dude, the Area 51 fight scene was cool. It was awesome. It was really cool. Um, it loses its footing a little bit in the middle with trying to tie in these other storylines. that The caravan. The caravan, family. the scientists. Um, I honestly think it's, it's fine if you just don't include the family. Probably. It's just like, okay, yeah. yeah, we have scientists who run this. They've got to be there. Yeah. And we've got... Venom and Eddie. Yeah. Great. Yeah. And then there's just this random family, and it's like, <laughs> they don't need to be there at the end. Yeah. It's just... I mean, overall, it's just, it's not like it's a well-written movie anyway, so, like, I feel like we're just... Yeah. We're... we're Split some hairs? <laughs> don't need to hit on the, hit it too hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, no, it's, it's probably, like, a straight-to-streaming for me um, as well. I had I had a good time because my expectations were low, 
I had some good popcorn. It was mm-hmm. a date night. Always fun. So, yeah. And I think, I, I'm wondering if you agree with me about the uh, the Christmas Doctor. The Christmas Doctor. She was, like, the only character I actually liked. Oh. Because she... Like, the only one you would, like, root for? No, that I, like, actually liked. Like, was actually a good actress? No, like... No. <laughs> like, the character... I, mean, I thought she was fine, but no, just, like, her character. It's so, like, this is a... In every other superhero movie, this is a nothing character... They're in the oh. first act, they're there a little bit in the second, yeah. then they die. Yeah. And they weren't that. And I like I liked that. I get you. I get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, my, like, one of my two positives of the movie, and, the, and it's literally the same scene, because it's the Area 51 fight scene. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that that makes sense. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I liked the... I mean, yeah. Again, she didn't have much to do, but that's okay. And when she, she wasn't as stereotypical as maybe one would yeah. assume i just like i'd expect that character to be chewed up in the second act and that's right. where you go <gasps> yeah yeah and they have that little <gasps> and the bomb goes off or whatever mm-hmm. <gasps> <gasps> no they're actually like relatively important to the story <laughs> yeah yeah she had to make sure she left her jordans there <laughs> yeah <laughs> no there was yeah there was some cool stuff there was uh, yeah, some neat tra- some neat transformations. The credits were the credits cool. were cool. The credits were cool. Uh, the final post credit scene sucked. Um, Wait, which one was where the guy was runs out Noel? of the cave? No, no, Noel was the first post credit scene. Okay, this is the, the guy bar from the Ted bartender. Lasso. The bartender runs. Yes, he is from Ted Lasso. Yeah, he runs out of the cave. It's pretty stupid, but it's also kind of funny. It's because he's like, what? <laughs> thinks the world has ended. But yeah, I thought it was odd to try and set up a tease a null movie at the end of this one. I think the funniest part of the movie is the uh, the emotional montage. <laughs> <laughs> We're just like, I know what you're going for, and I hate to inform you, it's not, not working. Not gonna work. It's not working. Not gonna work. <laughs> Everybody in the theater's just going, oh, the movie's about to end. <laughs> Was that even the song? I don't know. <sighs> oh, yeah. Anyways, that's about all I did this week. Man, nice. you changed my mind. I'm bat- batting it up to a Matthew with that- <laughs> no, it's a kid. It's a bad movie. Uh, I'll quickly go. I DNF'd a book this week. Uh, DNF'd? D- did not finish. Um, oh. I removed, I stopped reading it. So I was trying to was trying check to out uh, Keanu Reeves and oh, yeah. China Mayville's book, The Book of Elsewhere. Um, I was about 75, 80, 100 pages in, somewhere in there, and I was reading, and I couldn't quite figure out what was happening, and so I took a pause, and I said, uh, let me try to summarize what I've read in this book so far to myself, and I realized that I couldn't. Um, oh, no. <laughs> I was very confused. It's third person present tense, and it's changing perspectives by, through about three or to four characters, and I was just very lost, so... I only tell you guys this because I'm here to say if you are reading a book and it's just not clicking for you, it's okay to, it's okay to not put finish. it down and read something else. There you go. Um, Show too. It took me a very long time to do that for books, games, movies, um, shows. Yeah. I, I, but I have a little more trouble with games doing that. I don't now. I did for a bit. but I do. Games are $70. I'm playing that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just do the free-to-play ones. <laughs> I am finishing it, and I am going to rip it for everything that I can find. I usually don't really dislike games that much, though. So The other thing I did, um, new game came out this week on mobile, Pokemon trading card game Pocket. It is kind of blowing up. Pokemon Go to the Polls? No. Oh. Okay. It's a trading card game. It's Pokemon pretty fun. can't vote. You should know this, Brett. Um. Come on. It's... Election Eve. I made a 2016 throwback. You're out here spreading misinformation. That Hillary Pokemon... Clinton Pokemon joke. That was... Wait, she made a joke about Pokemon? Yeah, yeah. She literally had a, we have to get them the Pokemon go to the polls. Oh. 
I don't think I was paying oh that much God. attention. Oh, my wish. Guys, I, wish, I worked so hard for that joke. I wish... No, you didn't. I teed it up by saying a story that I you know. didn't know I was going to talk about. You I didn't work hard for it. anything. You also stole it. <laughs> so did you work at all? I also wish I'd never heard that joke in my life. I'm going to show you the actual clip afterwards. Please don't. Yep, that was happening. Um... It's pretty cool. It's kind of blown up. It made $12 million in four days. Wow. Um, I've not spent any real money. I don't know why people would do that, but Are some people will just fan? do it. Um, <coughs> what is happening? Dude, those are the refs that... Oh, that help the Chiefs all the help time? The Chiefs, and yeah. they're, they're wearing the blind sunglasses. So that's all I did, but... Uh, speaking of that, my coworker dressed up as a ref for Halloween. He's like, I just don't know how to like finish it. I was like, you're a Chiefs fan, right? He's like, yeah. I was like, you should wear a Chiefs hat and say you're a Chiefs fan. <laughs> and he was like, what do you mean? I was like, well, people say the refs help them all the time. And he was like, oh, yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. But he didn't do that. He wore a hat that said referee instead. And I was like, Steve. I would why do a cooperative costume and have somebody dress up like just as a coach. Yeah. And every once in a while come over and they just like hand them fake money. <laughs> it's like <laughs> Monopoly money. Here you go. Where, like, when you take the company picture, like, it's them exchanging cash. They're doing, like, the drug deal handshake. Just, like, every five minutes off, you walk up and just dab yeah. them <laughs> Clearly show that it's there's, like, obvious. a... It's like, oh, there's a nothing going on here. Gold 500 right there. Yeah. But that's all I did. Luke? Um, I, I didn't do a lot this week. I mainly just played Destiny. Um, I think next week is the time to play Destiny, right? It is? Didn't they announce that they're fixing oh, all of fixing the, loot, the loot things? Yeah. Oh, they're fixing it? You know what? I, why do I have a feeling it's just going to be worse? <laughs> There's my prediction. You've been there a while. Um, I mean, the stuff they're fixing doesn't really impact me. It's mainly the new dungeon that people oh, care okay. about the most, and mm. I haven't done it. So, But no, Festival of the Lost started this week, and you can... Uh, the currency is candy. This is a holiday event. Yep. But you can buy exotic class items oh. for characters you haven't unlocked it yet. So I've been mainly playing Hunter and Warlock and getting as many as I can. Nice. Um, and it's been a lot of fun. I've been playing a lot of Warlock, Brett. Warlock's great. Using the Prismatic subclass. Yeah. yeah. I've, I've, like, I've just spent as much candy as I can on getting uh, as many exotic class items as I can. There you go. Uh, and it's been fun. Nice. It's awesome. I like that game. Sweet. Okay. Uh, last item on our things to talk about this week. Dude, I saw this like five minutes ago on there. Oh, and on I the bottom? I was like, oh, yeah. I forgot we were doing that. <laughs> Ominously... Uh, just if you're if you're a listener of the podcast, yeah, we have a little lower a bar that kind of talks about all of our t- like, trailers, reviews, news, updates, and then and then the last one just says the future. <laughs> scary times, scary, scary times. Scary times. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I was gonna write up something, and then Luke reminded me that we're the What the Fanboy podcast. We've never written anything for the show. The only thing that's ever been written for the show was back when I was doing the streaming wars. Yep. I wrote those out, um, and we haven't really done it since. So it would be in. You should do a streaming wars update for the last show. Oh, Teaser. maybe. <laughs> uh, yeah. So here's the deal. At the at the beginning of this year, I'll just give everyone kind of the backstory. Um, as I am moving more and more into filmmaking and wanting to pursue those things more, I made the decision that this was going to be my last year on the podcast. Um, <clears throat> from that, we've kind of had discussions, and essentially what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to finish out this year um, going as, as, as it is now with the live streaming, uh, with the podcasts. Uh, we'll still, the podcast will still exist. We just won't be updating it regularly. Um, we're kind of, I mean, I'm more or less taking a step away um that's my decision but i'll let tyler and luke talk about what their decisions and what their future in kind of contributing to what what the fanboy will be um is kind of in their how they envision it so tyler why don't you go next yeah i mean for me you know 
I help Brett with a lot of that stuff. Um, that no, wasn't necessarily the motivating factor for me. Um, if you've followed along for the last three years, um, <laughs> I'm big into like the dad thing. Yeah. Um, and so I really just want that extra time to spend with my family. Yeah. Um, and as well, recent developments career wise, um, I've kind of gotten myself promoted into positions of importance and I'll have to travel now. And so like those opportunities to be with my family are, you know, going to be impacted by that. And so they're even more valuable now. Yeah. So maximizing that time for me while my kids are still pretty young is really my main motivator. Um, as far as like moving forward, we've kind of talked about like a website and maybe some writing and maybe occasionally getting back together to record something here and there. Um, and I'm happy to, to do that kind of stuff moving forward. Um, but for me, uh, just the, the spending time with my kids is my top priority moving forward. So Absolutely. Luke? Um, I guess I'll just probably just write stuff for the website. Yeah. Um, like more because ex- I can't podcast by myself. <laughs> you I guess could. I could. You could. <laughs> no. It would just. It's just. I don't hard. think I could. I get tough. distracted by watching the Chiefs, and I'd just be yeah. sitting here for five minutes <laughs> <laughs> on your mic. Like this is your opportunity to use our base to launch your streaming career. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, dude. Actually, that's genius. I don't know if you'd ever really want to do that. I don't that, think but... I would be a good streamer. I'm not. Because to stream, you, you have. To talk and play video games, and I can't do that. Mm. Dude, I struggle. Like, when I'm partied up with people and I'm playing, people are like, yeah, and then you see that? And I'm like, what? <laughs> Luke, you're muted. Nope, I'm not. I'm just not talking. I'm literally putting all of my effort into playing this very complicated video game. <laughs> um, but yeah, we yeah we still have the website. Yep. Yep. So they'll get it hasn't been there. updated in a, in a hot minute. Like, the website will at probably... least a year. But I'd say if we do it, the website will be more busy than the YouTube. Yeah. Or the anchor. Yeah. 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 RSS feed. So. Yeah. The the audio versions of the podcast, the video, whatever you know, whatever gets posted to YouTube and or lands in your podcast feed is probably gonna go pretty dark unless there's like, hey, we all went and saw Brave New World and we wanna we really wanna talk about it. Yeah. Then we may hop back on for an episode and then we make and then it'd be dark again yep. um but even that's still very much up in the air um yeah it'll definitely be like a case by case case by case and it may not be all three of us right it may right. be one of those things where if tyler's out or didn't go didn't even go see the movie right you know maybe just luke and i get together to, to chat about it or maybe it's just a write-up who knows there's there's we'll just, a lot of moving we'll pieces. See my Instagram or not moving story pieces. from Letterbox. <laughs> <laughs> Three and a half stars. It was fine. <laughs> but but I think what it's like fifty reviews a year of <laughs> it was okay. It was good. I liked it. Like we've been doing this now since 2017. You guys have been doing it since 2017. I joined in 18. Or did um, I join in? Luke can like often pull the episode numbers out of you his You jumped in episode three. You were a guest. That's true. That's true. I was on our own. Um, and then I think it was episode 40. Yeah, it was, it was around So within 40. the first year. Yeah, yeah, just under a year. Yeah. But we've been doing this for, so 2017, so seven and a half probably yeah. years now. Um, it has been an absolute honor and a just fun oh it's been a blast um you know we're not doing we're not the the group's not breaking up yeah Um, it's not because we we don't love doing it um it's because we can't kiss on stream it's yeah (laughs) it's it's mostly that (laughs) is that we can't kiss on stream but um but yeah no i just wanted to to extend and we'll we'll probably say we'll definitely do more in in the last episode but like I want to thank you guys for including me. I want to thank anyone who's ever watched or listened, um, who's ever given feedback or commented in the chat. Uh, it's it's just been such an important part of the last seven years of my life. Oh, yeah. Um, and really, I don't think I would have gotten the itch 
I maybe would have had the itch. I wouldn't have scratched the itch to get back into filmmaking like I have and taken it as seriously as I am without this podcast and without knowing you two and knowing that you guys are like, were excited. Someone was excited to help me make a movie. Yeah. That just like blew my mind. Yeah. I expect to see thank so. you, Luke, at the end of every single every one. Every single one. <laughs> yeah, he's in the, the thank yous. For Luke. And Tyler. Right here. Well, he'll be second AD for Luke. Just, yeah, yeah. No, we're just going to make it everyone wonder who is this luke that he's always thinking you know like did, yeah. he, die? <laughs> did he die it's like every you know every book has like the this one's for my mom right. at the beginning but every film opens with a for <laughs> luke, luke at the beginning <laughs> and there's always a character named luke in there it's like what are we doing yes no uh for me you know just i would i would extend and repeat a lot of what brett's saying uh minus the movie stuff but uh if you've listened watched laughed at us Remembered all the awkward like streams we've done. Our first episode being one of the most embarrassing things ever. Heck no, I'm um, proud of that. <laughs> dude. Remember when COVID hit and we like had to switch to Re- recording doing from it home via, and stuff. Yeah, home. So many crazy oh. things. Um, but you know, for me, like obviously, outside of like the hangs and going to the movies and and all that, um, this podcast brought me a lot of opportunity. Yeah. Um, you know, we've gotten press passes. We've you know, did a con where we recorded an episode at a comic con. We've, mm-hmm. that was crazy. we've met, we met Kevin Conroy, which was like, you know, we met Batman, which is insane. Um, you know, for, for me personally, I was able to spin it into two, um, football media jobs. Yeah. Um, which was really cool and something I never thought I'd have the opportunity to do. Um, and a lot of that was driven by this show specifically and just having, you know, documented video of me speaking to a microphone on YouTube, and it got me, you know, with the the Takeover Network for mm-hmm. a little for about a year, um, and then I've done some freelance work for Bleacher Report, which I still do from time to time. Like, those are things I never would have had the chance to do, um, and I just find that really cool. So, there will always be some part of me that like is indebted to this, yeah. right? Like, and. I don't think I would have ever grown as close as I have with you two throughout, um, without, without this show. So, uh, you know, I gained two brothers out of it as well, which is great. So very, uh, very much going to look back on this era fondly. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Yeah. I feel like it too. It just made me care about movies a little more. Oh yeah, yeah for sure. Kind of, I, I think I kind of, and for all of us opened our critical eye. <laughs> yeah. Can kind of realize what's bad and what's actually good. Yep. Like yep. Transformers 5, one of the best movies <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't, I honestly uh, don't think I ever would have said that before this. Yeah, I've yeah. I've been like, yeah, it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's horrible. It was the worst one. It's like, yeah. no, be proud of what you like. Yep. Um, but yeah, yes. Monday Nights has been the best day of the week for me yeah. like people was like always gotten case of the mondays and hate mondays mondays are the worst actually monday's my favorite yeah day. you look forward to it absolutely <laughs> i got i got to survive the work day sure but i have four hours on monday night yep you get to hang out with your buddies it's and... just party time baby. yeah yeah no it's great and like i think what's nice too you know post the show mm-hmm. we will still have those monday nights where we get together like that's not going away in my mind like, we had one night off, and Luke and I did the Mystery Movie Monday at Regal. One of the coolest things I've ever done. I want to yeah. do more of that. Yeah, like, we got to see an okay movie. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't bad, though. We were kind of surprised. Like, oh. We walked out, we were like, mm, okay. Yeah, that wasn't too oh, bad. Right, right. Now, Our butler isn't an only trash. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I think, you know, we'll have chances to do stuff like that still, too. So. Oh, for sure. Um, yeah. No, I think it's, you know, we're getting older. Yeah, not, it's not, life, not getting life, any younger. Life changes, and yep. we we've I feel like done a good job of tweaking the show here and there. Yep. As our lives have kind of demanded it, and I think we're just getting to that point where it's like, there's just got to be a bigger shift. Yeah. And the and demand was that's okay. We needed something better for our butts throughout. <laughs> we, you know. <laughs> Yeah, we had those, I got you guys a couch. We had those stools for so long. <laughs> yeah. Did 
long lasting damage to my tush and spine. I still think probably the best seats it was the OG couch at your guys' at you and when the Nantucket at house. the Nantucket house with Chris and Dude, it was comfy. That was a big those were big yeah, that fluffy was, cushions. That was Chris's and, couch. It was awesome. Yeah. Shout out Chris. Yeah, yeah, shout out Chris. One of the yeah, OGs. Yeah, he was the other OG that started with us. Yep. Shout out Buffalo Wild Wings. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was... Yep. Um, but yeah. So, yeah, I mean, all that we'll, to say... We'll talk more about this as it nears... Yeah, and... we've got <clears throat> seven or so more episodes, so, like, we'd love for you to hang out with us as we kind of finish this chapter we have to finish our prediction game though. yes we will yeah. absolutely 100 percent finish the prediction game that means you have seven weeks to beat control oh shoot <laughs> and it's I the forget. busiest time yours, of the year it? or i get to wax you <laughs> that's right bro you think i haven't you. been waxed before i don't care it grows back it will still hurt <laughs> Do we need to? Do we need to shave him? His wedding's this weekend. <laughs> shave him. Shave him. Rip. I can be a difficult man. <laughs> oh I'm, my I'm goodness! W- waxing that too, though. Oh, I told you I'm waxing everything. I will. I would kind of be curious. Everything but the eyebrows. I'm not cruel. I would kind of be. I'd be <laughs> just, really curious to to eyebrow. see what I'm no. look like bald as somebody who didn't have eyebrows for a long time i'm never gonna make anybody <laughs> get rid of their go eyebrows. through that it was a dark time in luke's life it was like yeah. six years too Oof. long it's actually still going on it's why one of the reasons i wear glasses is because my eyebrows you can't see them right now huh fun fact it's a fun fact you learn something new every day yeah well cool okay so yeah like tyler said we'll we'll talk a little bit more about some maybe if we have any concrete future plans down the line, but yeah, we'd love for you to hang out with us for the last, you know, couple handful of episodes. Um, we're not doing anything too crazy. It'll be the normal show, but yep. we'll definitely be looking back and thinking about memories. We'll, we'll, and... we'll be going down memory lane a little bit more. <coughs> yeah. And, oh, for uh, sure. If you hang out long enough, who knows? Maybe you'll get to see me get waxed. <laughs> so, until next wax week, like an arm on stream. And next week we'll be talking about rip. penguin for sure. Yes, I'm hopefully gonna get get out and go see Heretic, because that's out. This that's week. this weekend. That's this weekend. Ooh. So there should be a couple couple fun things to review next week. <clears throat> um, and then we've got you know you normal news and all that stuff. So that. until then, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We'll see ya.